So uric acid example earlier I gave uh, that is lizards. So uh, lizards are the examples of uric acid uh, uric acid excretion that is uh, eugotelic organism. Lizard is a eugotelic organism, and there are other insects, and crustaceans, snails, reptiles. Then birds are also there. Okay. So these are the examples of eugotelic organisms. So let me just give you an example. First we'll look at this one again. So uricotelin, this is the process, nitrogenous process, uric acid, already discussed. Then the organisms which excrete uric acid are known as uricotelic. Okay, and it, uh, this uric acid excretion, it is, it, is, uh, it is a very complex process and requires a lot of energy. But the positive thing is that it doesn't require that much water. Means it requires very less amount of water. Because since it is, uric acid is almost insoluble in water. And, and it is very uh, less toxic, it is not that toxic, therefore it can be stored in the body for longer period of time without causing any harm to your body tissues and um, organs and stuff like that. So examples, uh, let me give you an example of like a uh, lizard, take an example of house lizards. Okay? House lizards, when they excrete uh, fecal matter, their fecal matter is, uh, you have seen, uh, obviously, all of you have seen that is uh, a black, uh, black or brown, black portion is there, and there is a white portion along with it, right? So that white portion, which is along with the fecal matter, that is their urine. Okay, it is not like a uh, human being. Urine is liquid, right? Urination when we when urine is it is liquid. It is in the liquid state. But since uricotelic organism. Since they do not require that much water, their water requirement is very less, they are almost uric acid is almost insoluble in water. Therefore, their urination or their excretion it is in the form of pellets. Pellets means it is in the form of uh, almost a solid form. Okay, uh, not totally solid, but a paste kind of form, not liquid. Because uh, water water means a mixture of water with that uric acid it is very less. Water excretion is very less. Therefore, the excretion of this uric acid, uh, those organisms which excrete uric acid, those uh, those organisms excreta, it is not of a liquid form. It is almost solid, and it is uh, it, it is in the form of pellets. The uh, the example you have all seen of house lizard, the excreta it contains of that white color thing. That white color thing is there is uric acid. Okay, so uh, that is uh, about this. And uh, here I have given this one. So in birds and reptiles, what happens? Uh, uric acid, generally, it is it is it is formed in the liver. Then uric acid, it is it comes to the kidney, and it, it in the kidney it is found in a dilute solution. Okay, watery solution. In, it is found in the kidney. Then it comes to the cloaca, where water water gets absorbed. Means water is taken up and uh, rest means uh, solution is also uh, already taken and the solute remains okay solute means whatever that is uric acid is found that remains because the water it gets absorbed means absorbed all of you know i guess so water is absorbed then uric acid is uh, it is it remains means uh, if like if if you make a solution of uric acid and water and if the water is absorbed then the rest remaining part will be uric acid right Therefore, uric acid it remains, and it is that then then that those pellets I was talking about that those pellets were formed, and they are excreted along with the fecal matter. This is what I have written in in the form of uh, this flowchart kind of thing. Okay, then there is uh, birds droppings. Droppings. Why they are called droppings? Because birds fly around, right? And they drop from while flying, they pass their uh, excretory matters. And therefore, they are known as droppings. Those droppings are known as guano. Okay, this is an important term. Just remember the term. So, birds droppings, so it is known as guano. So, what happens? Uh, uric acid, it is used for, uric acid, commercial uses also uric acid is used, right? For selling and stuff like that. For uh, that those purposes, industries and, and all, all those. So, this, they collect birds droppings. And since I have mentioned that uric acid is uh, pa passed by this uh, uh, uricotelic organisms in the form of pellets, in the form of uh, paste. 
also uh, those birds dropping they also contain uric acid right along along with the fecal matter uric acid is also there so what the, what what happens this uh, companies and whatever tho those uh, those uh, institutions they they what they what they does they collect those birds droppings that is known as guano so they collect the guano and they extract the uric acid from those fecal matter okay they separate the uric acid from the fecal matter and they use that uric acid for commercial uses okay for commercial selling and uh, stuff like that they use it, it it for economic purposes okay they sell those uh, uric acid so uric acid it can be it is extracted from the birds droppings and and uh, the uric acid is separated from the fecal matter fecal matter is uh, degraded then the uric acid it is used for uh, for commercial extraction okay okay so this is all about uricotelic organism okay so uh, is there any doubts from uricotelic uricotelic it is very easy and if you have doubts you can ask okay so next we will move to excretory system so we have already we have now, till now we have discussed about nitrogenous waste and how does it get ex excreted so for example uh, things get digested right you you had lunch so that lunch will be digested right so for digest the digestion to work there needs to be a digestive system there is a digestive system for digestion to work right same way for excretion to work there needs to be an excretory system okay there, there needs to be an excretory system the excretory system is the system through which by which means there, there are different organs and uh, everything and uh, compiled together to form the excretory system and they perform the function of excretion okay so the main most important organ uh, that is in in the excretory system is kidneys so kidneys are responsible for excretion most important thing kidneys are means the main organ that is responsible for excretion it is the kidney okay so how many kidneys do we have there are two kidneys and so human excretory system is comprised of two kidneys means a pair of kidneys means two kidneys then there is a, a pair of ureters we will get to know what are ureters and then a urinary bladder is there and urethra is there so let's look at the diagram and we'll learn better okay. so these are the kidneys two kidneys i have mentioned these are the kidneys okay. these are the these are the two kidneys then this is the this thing here this is the ureter that i was talking about two ureters, ureters are there this uh, one and this is the second ureter so these two ureters are there and this is the urinary bladder this is the urinary bladder where the urine is stored then this is the urethra where the urine comes out okay i have uh, included this body posture so that you can imagine where the position and location of the kidney and where the location of this excretory system is so now we will look at the um, look at the kidney so what is how uh, what is the location of the kidney what is the size of the kidney what is the shape and weight of the kidney okay shape we you all know kidney is a bean shape bean shape means this is there is a little curvature on one side uh, it, 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 it resembles the kidney resembles the it kidney. resembles the sorry bean bean that we eat so it uh, the kidney structure of the kidney it resembles the bean so it is bean shaped uh, curvature is there on both the sides okay and the location location it is we have to remember this so uh, how many ribs do we have do you know rib 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 cage rib cage all of you know so there are 12 pairs of ribs okay this side 12 and this side 12 so kidney it starts from this 12th rib it is positioned on the 12th rib okay and to the uh, here it is in 12th thoracic vertebrae and first second first to third lumbar vertebrae right so here is the 12th thoracic vertebrae then comes first 
second third number so third number is almost situated here so kidney kidney is situated in this position in the lower abdomen lower abdomen okay and size is uh, it is uh, shape is it is big shape five. yes size is 5 inch oh. okay yes so shape is it is bean shaped two kidneys are the bean shape and size is about 5 inch long long means here to here it will be here to here this portion it will be like 5 inch almost about near and about and uh, in this diagram just uh, notice one thing this is this kidney is little bit lower than this kidney right why is it so this is the right kidney this is the left kidney so right kidney it is situated little bit lower than the left kidney okay this is the left kidney this is the right kidney so right kidney is located little bit lower than the left kidney it is not in the same level you just see it is not in the same level this is little bit higher this is little bit lower lower so why does it uh, why why is it not uh, in the same level why is the right kidney little bit lower the reason is that the right kidney it is pushed by the liver there is the liver here okay in the liver so there is this liver here so the right kidney it is pushed by the weight of the liver okay there is no liver here one liver so liver is here in this portion so since the uh, uh, weight of the liver pushes this right kidney a little bit lower that's why this right kidney is positioned a bit lower than the left okay so while drawing the if 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 uh, we happen to have offline exams if this diagram comes so you have to make sure you draw the right kidney a little bit lower than the left okay if you draw it in the same level it will be wrong so make sure you draw, draw the right kidney a little bit lower than the left kidney and the weight 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 of the kidney it is uh, for males it is a little bit higher than the females the uh, exact uh, gram about uh, the weight it is given here for for uh, females it is a little bit lighter and for males it is a little bit heavier okay okay before that so what happens uh the urine it is formed here and it this ureter what is the function of this ureter so ureter it passes the urine okay the, the urine formed water is restored retained and everything is done then it passes through this tubes, tube like thing. Okay, this tube like thing known as the ureters. Then urine is stored in the urinary bladder. Okay, it is stored, stored, stored. When it becomes a uh, sufficient amount, you can the pressure, then it, uh, then you pass it through this urethra, urethra, urethra and ureter. Both are two different terms. Okay, don't confuse. Ureter, one is ureter, two ureters are there, and one urethra through which urine. Is passed. Ureter, ureters mean tube. Yes, ureters. There are there are two types of tubes. Two tubes are there. Two one pair of ureters is there attached to the kidney. That is this concave portion is there. No, it is attached here and one one end to the urinary bladder. One end to the kidney. So we pass through these tubes. It comes and falls in the urinary bladder, and then it comes out through the urethra. Urethra is urethra is also a sort of a tube. But then these ureters are different tubes. So urine comes here, then urethra is uh, is the last opening. You can say an opening. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the internal structure of kidney. So uh, earlier this this kidney. So if we if we cut the kidney in half, this kind of structure can be seen. Okay. So uh, these are the uh, this is the structure internal structure of kidney. A diagram. Uh, no need uh, no need of explanation and all sometimes it might come for uh, like if you if you are asked to draw the diagram of a kidney so it might become uh, internal structure if it is if it comes then you have to draw this diagram okay. so these are the this is the tube that i have spoken of this is the concave part then this this is the tube coming ureter this is the tube so before it becomes the tube before it becomes narrow this portion is known as renal pelvis okay this portion that is attached to the kidney then it means this portion will be renal pelvis this portion this portion is the renal pelvis this is the ureter when it becomes lower it becomes the ureter okay then then there is vein and artery vein and artery are, are, there, are there blood coming and going so 
ni this uh, this uh, what to say uh, atrium vena there then this portion is the cortex this is the medulla okay medulla and cortex are there this is the medulla and this is the cortex then these are the walls of the kidney there are three walls there, these are the walls one the middle there is a fatty layer then there is the out, outer layer so these are the three walls of the kidney then this is all of this okay so this is the internal structure of kidney you just have to uh, if it is asked then you have to just draw it uh, and label it so this uh, remember this portion is the kidney and in in in, in, in innermost portion is, it is the medulla and this uh, broaden portion is the pelvis and when it becomes the renal pelvis and when the renal pelvis it becomes narrow it becomes the ureter so these are the walls so this is uh, when human when it is asked to draw the human excretory system you have to draw this diagram okay not with the whole body and all earlier this diagram included this uh, part right so you don't you don't have to draw this outline when it is asked about human excretory system you have to draw this diagram you can include this adrenal gland you if you don't want you don't include this adrenal gland it is not a part of human excretory system but since adrenal gland is located uh, above the kidney it is attached to the kidney therefore it is drawn but it is not mandatory to draw the adrenal gland so this kidney so and internal structure also not required uh, when you draw this diagram uh, when it is asked to draw the human excretory system no need to draw this internal structure okay if you want you can draw but otherwise you can draw this one similar to this one without the internal stuff when when it is asked to draw the internal structure you draw the internal structure but when it is asked to draw human excretory system no need to draw in between inside part you can draw if you want but you can skip this part so yes so this is all about uh, so we are not going into in depth because already this chapter was not completely about excretory system this chapter was about the nitrogenous waste that's why we focus more on the nitrogenous waste and and since uh, excretory system is important that's why i'm looking and giving you overall overview of the human excretory system what it comprises of and what all things are there what is the function of kidney size and shape and everything a little bit okay and i'll give definitions examples and everything but you have to draw this diagram and the other one these two diagrams are important okay so uh, this chapter is done so if you have any doubts from anything from beginning to end you can ask uh, because next class we'll move to next chapter we'll start a new chapter so uh, any doubts regarding any portion just ask ma'am yes Hello, ma'am. Yes, yes. Can you explain that formation and excretion of uric acid? Uric acid. Okay. 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 Yeah, that formation. Yeah, yeah. This one. This one, right? Okay. So, uh, initially, a uh, very, very present in my first class. This when we when we thought about this one, very present. No, man. No, no. Okay, let no, me. Okay, let me go through this portion once more. Okay. Time, a little bit time. So what happens? Uh, I'll just give a brief overview. Okay. So there are three types of nitrogenous waste. One is ammonia, urea, and uric acid. I'll come to formation and excretion of uric acid. Okay. So. Uh, uh, there are three types of nitrogenous waste: ammonia, urea, and uric acid. So, uh, first, this ammonia we we learned about ammonotelism, that is excretion of ammonia. So, what happens? How is ammonia formed? So, I have mentioned that whether it is ammonotelic organism, whether it is ureotelic, whether it is uricotelic organism, in all types of organism, ammonia is the primary product formed. Ammonia is the product formed in the initial stage. Initially, ammonia is only formed in all of the three uh, organisms. Okay, a type of organism: ammonotelic, ureotelic, ericotelic. In all those organisms, ammonia is the initial product. Ammonia is formed in all of the three uh, organisms. 
but in ammonotelic organisms in ammonotelic organisms excreting ammonia when uh, in ammonotelic organisms what happens ammonia is excreted as soon as it is formed okay as soon as ammonia is formed it is excreted okay but in other organisms like ureotelic and ureotelic ammonia is con ammonia when it is formed it is converted into urea in ureotelic organisms by urea cycle and in ureotelic organisms ammonia is converted into urea oh, sorry uric acid okay that is the difference but in all the organisms ammonia this uh, this oxidative deamination of amino acid is there no formation of ammonia so a formation of ammonia is a initial step in all the three types all the three type of organism that is ammonotelic ureotelic and ureotelic in all organisms means whatever organism you see in your day to day life whatever whether it is fish whether it is living in the land fish frog everything lizards everything in every organism ammonia is the initial product form but uh, for ammonotelic organism ammonia is excreted as soon as it is formed but for ureotelic organisms ammonia is converted into urea and then it is excreted for ureotelic organisms ammonia is uh, converted into uric acid and then it is excreted okay that is the difference so how is ammonia formed ammonia is formed by oxidative deamination of amino acid okay. so what happens there are uh, thousands and thousands of amino acids in our body okay but not all amino acids are required some amino acids are not required not that much uh, essential and some are not required so those amino acids which are not required they undergo oxidative deamination and the meaning of deamination is the removal of a amino group deamination means removal of an amino group so this is the structure of an amino acid this is a alpha carbon this is the carbon this is hydrogen this is amino group that we are talking of and this is the carboxyl group c o h carboxyl group and this is the r group r group can be anything can be hydrogen can be hydroxyl group can be anything okay so this is the structure of amino acid so let's say this amino acid is not required in your body let's say this amino acid is not essential in your body and it is not required in your body so what happens to this amino acid this amino will undergo oxidative deamination okay those amino acids which are not required in your body those will undergo oxidative deamination so what happens in oxidative deamination this Am, uh, amino uh, i have already mentioned deamination means removal of amino group so the, this from this amino acid this amino group will be removed okay then the rest it will remain this portion will only be there so this portion will be known as organic acid so amino acid without the amino group will be known as organic acid okay amino acid without the amino group this is the amino group this is the whole amino acid so amino acid without this without the organic uh, without the amino group is known as organic acid so the this organic acid will be stored in the form of carbohydrate in our body okay now what what happens to this amino group so this amino group will be separated right and this amino group will take up one hydrogen okay or one proton so amino group will take up one hydrogen and it will form one ammonia so it will form ammonia okay this is how ammonia is formed you can see the formula for ammonia nh3 amino group is nh2 so it needs one more hydrogen right so when it when the amino group takes up one hydrogen it will form amino uh, ammonia okay this is how ammonia is formed in all the organisms initial step is this but in ammonotelic organisms what happens this ammonia is formed and it is excreted as soon as it is formed okay for ammonotelic organisms for ureotelic organisms what happens for ureotelic organisms what happens ammonia is formed okay same way ammonia is formed then what happens ammonia this ammonia is formed right ammonia it reacts with carbon dioxide for ureotelic organisms okay ammonia it reacts with carbon dioxide and it forms urea, urea this is the formula for urea this one formula for urea so ammonia it reacts with carbon dioxide and forms urea and that cycle this cycle is known as the urea cycle so what happens basically Uh, in ureotelic organisms ammonia is formed the same way amid deamination then ammonia is converted into urea by urea cycle also known as onitsu cycle okay and then it is excreted now let's come to uh, your question that is uric acid 
तो यूरिक एसिड यूरिक एसिड ऑल्सो सेम थिंग व्हाट हैपेंस एमोनिया इज फॉर्म्ड एंड एमोनिया इज कन्वर्टेड इनटू यूरिक एसिड एंड देन इट इज रिमूव्ड ओके बट हियर आई हैव मेंशन दिस बिकॉज अर्लियर वी हैव मेंशन लाइक फॉर एमोनोटेलिक ऑर्गेनिज्म फॉर एमोनिया एक्सप्रेशन इट रिक्वायर्स सो मच ऑफ वाटर ओके सो मच ऑफ वाटर इज रिक्वायर्ड therefore only aquatic organisms can excrete ammonia right for uh, urea little, little bit less water is required and little bit uh, urea is little bit less toxic but uh, therefore terrestrial organisms can excrete uh, uh, urea but still water is required but for eukaryotic organisms eukaryotic organisms which excrete uric acid water water requirement is very very less okay since uric acid is almost insoluble in water Insoluble means it is not soluble in water, almost not soluble. In it is little bit soluble, but not that much soluble. Therefore, uric acid excretion it requires very less amount of water. But there is one uh, drawback of uric acid exc uh, excretion of eukaryotic organ of of eukaryotism. There is one drawback of eukaryotism that is it requires more energy. And an ATP. ATP means adenosine triphosphate, and ATP is an energy storing molecule. Okay, ATP is an energy storing molecule. So since it requires more ATP, means more energy, there is a, uh, a drawback, and this uh, ex uh, formation and excretion of uric acid is a complex process. Lots of energy is used, and uh, all. But uh, water consumption is very less. Okay, so uh, this is actually to to talk of the the production of uric acid from ammonia it is a very complex process okay but we don't need that much detail but uh, for for now we will you will get to know in uh, all those in details in the your coming uh, what to say uh, semesters in 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 a separate paper biochemistry so that's why now for now we don't need to go into that much depth just remember that what happens in eukaryotic organism for formation and excretion of uric acid what happens Initially, ammonia is formed. Then, ammonia is converted into uric acid. Okay, in the liver. Okay, it comes also in the kidney, but majority of the uric acid it is formed in the liver, and it is formed from ammonia. Ammonia it converts into uric acid, and then it is excreted. Okay, uh, and one drawback is that that is it requires lot of ATP. Okay, no water, but lot of ATP is required. Means lot of ATP means lot of energy is required. Okay, and this is a very complex process. So this is. So did you understand? Uh, what was her name? Be Veronica. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, yeah. Is there any 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 doubts? I'll I'll give you the notes. Okay, today I'll give you the notes uh, for this chapter. But uh, since uh, what to say? Uh, in from this uh uh. Presentation. You just need to copy a few important important points. If there are uh, one or two important things, if you you just need to copy it because that might not be included in the notes and that might come for one one mark questions like that. Okay. Or you can take screenshots or stuff like that. But that's why I suggest you take a uh, you keep a copy alongside you when you attend the class so that you can uh, write down if there is write something important. Uh, so I will uh, upload it uh, in like an an hour. You can check. Six for five six. You can check and you can give the feedback. Okay, and the class will come from like ten to ten forty five. Even though I have taken from three to three forty five. Okay, have any doubts? Can just ask. Any doubts regarding? So this chapter it is done. Just go through once and just ask if there is any. Have you all given the attendance? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, hello, ma'am. Yes, yes. Ma'am, extra ke aru di pona lagen no attendance apna no. year pora lolo pona. No. Apna lolo. Hmm. Malke bhai. Oh, thik hai sir. Malke di tha kani ki tu malke extra ke aku. 
হয় ম্যাম দিব লগা হয় ম্যাম তো কবা যে চ্যাট বক্স পর কপি করি লবলে তানে কে দিগদার তো আর হেতু আই ডোন্ট থিং দ্যাট ইজ দ্যাট উইল বি জেনুইন ওকে আই হ্যাভ সিন ইউ পিপল গিভিং অ্যাটেন্ডেন্স ইন WhatsApp গ্রুপস ইয়েস ম্যাম মি ইফ আই ইফ আই সি নো আই আই ক্যান গিভ দা অ্যাটেন্ডেন্স ইন WhatsApp গ্রুপ উইদাউট অ্যাটেন্ডিং দা ক্লাস রাইট ওকে নো তোমালকে ক্লাস নকৰা কও তো অ্যাটেন্ডেন্স তো WhatsApp গ্রুপত দিব পাৰা সো হেতু জেনুইন হয় ম্যাম Uh-huh. So, yeah, so for me, no need. I can copy this to the form here. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> Someone has not given it, I guess. There are 18 participants. There are less roll numbers. Can we give you attendance in the chat box? Still like that. Okay, uh, I guess there are no doubts. <laughs> so I will give you uh, the notes, okay? So this is all. If you have uh, no doubts, you can leave. 